We are talking about spiritual warfare, and I'm not going to go backwards, but I am going to uh, move forward and go right into what we've been discussing. And one of the things I started dealing with in the last video is I had said in the last uh, some other videos, and I thought I need to bring more clarity to it. Principalities and what they do, what they are, and how they rule atmospheres and how they control territories. Uh, and so we looked at that in the last video. We looked at how a, in, in Hosea, there was a spirit that God said was among the people that really controlled the atmosphere of the people, right? It controlled their activities and controlled what they did. And, it, and we showed them how they were enslaved, right? It shows how they were actually enslaved by this spirit in the atmosphere. And so one of the things that I didn't look at and I should have looked at is where we first get a look at this is in Daniel. In Daniel verse 10, we see principalities at work. And, and so this is important. This is important because as I move forward, I'm going to begin to teach you the power of praying. Some people don't understand the power of prayer. Most people don't even think that prayer even works. And, and, and so we're very uh, overwhelmed, overcome because we don't know how to pray. Or what peace we almost always forfeit. Or what gr man, painless grief we bear. All because we do not take our things of God in prayer. I know the words go something like that. Now, Daniel 11.10. Here Daniel is. He's just had a vision. And he's beginning to pray. And he's beginning to seek God about what's happening, right? And that was in verse, actually in verse uh, 9. But then in verse 10, he's starting to get an answer. Now it says... In verse 13, an angel has just appeared to him in his Gabriel and it says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now, I want you to understand he's an angel, right? I want you to begin to understand that there's a structure that we're beginning to, just beginning to be revealed to us in this passage, right? Because I want you to see that this angel, you don't think he got caught up or hindered. The Bible says this, he made man a little lower than the angels. So let me tell you, some of y'all have never experienced or seen them. They're not, they're supernatural in size and you are not going to try to fight one. And I promise you that. And, but it says this angel was being resisted by the prince of the kingdom of Persia, not the prince of Persia. Persia, the prince of the kingdom of Persia. So there are kingdoms in the dark, there's kingdoms, there are realms, right? And so there is a spiritual force that is ruling the atmosphere of Persia. And if you don't know about, do research on Persia. Persia was one of the most crucial, uh, brutal cultures to ever have existed. In fact, they are the ones who created um, uh, uh, the crucifixion process. And it is a hideous, you, you got to do your research, do your research on it. You'll find these are no, these people were no joke. These were the people you didn't want to get into no conflict with. And these people had over them a really nasty spirit. And he was a prince, it's called the Prince of the Kingdom of Persia. And it says it withstood, this is the, he's withstanding the angel, 21 days. So from the moment that Daniel began to pray, the answer came out that day. But it took 21 days of warfare in the in heavenly places for him to get to the plate, get to. And in fact, look, one of the things is the warfare becomes so intense for this angel. And he says not only that, the, that he was withstood by just this prince, but it says that it also, uh, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now he's not talking about the kings. He's talking about the other rulers of the darkness of this age. So you're beginning to see the principalities and you're seeing the rulers of the darkness of this age. You're beginning to see all of the different structures that are fighting this angel in the passage. They're fighting him in the passage, right? But, uh, and then we'll see it again, verse 20, it says, Then he said, Do you know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed the prince of Greece will come. So you're seeing that there are princes, there are powers, there are structures, individual world of authority. 
This is like a chess game to them. That's how it appears as they are conquering land. Now, I told you the church is a, is a is supposed to be moving forward, and we are supposed to be moving forward. That's why he tells us to go into all the world. He gives us a command that tells us to be aggressive. For the kingdom of heaven suffers violent, and the violent take it by force. If you want anything in this kingdom, you're going to have to learn how to be aggressive, and you're going to have to learn how to fight. You're going to learn have to learn how to do real warfare. Now, that's important because you're not going to be doing warfare by yourself, right? But I want you to see Daniel's position in the warfare because you're not going to get up and start swinging and fighting and all of these kind of things. And I've had all kind of experiences, but I'm not going to go into all my experiences. That's not the warfare part. The warfare is simple. God gives us a very simple command. Now, now that I've established that we can see that they're principalities, they're rulers of the darkness, and we can see that they have kingdoms, that they rule over nations, rule over cities, rule over countries, rule over families, rule over neighborhoods, rule over areas. You understand what I'm saying? There's a lot. We can then begin to establish that God can rule in these same areas. But how do we get this to happen? Now, I asked God an interesting question because Psalms, I mean, Proverbs 21, one says the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And he turns it like a like rivers of water. He turns it any direction that he chooses. And I said, well, Lord, if it's so simple as you turning the heart of the people in charge into the direction that you want them to go, then why don't you just turn it in the direction that you want them to go if that's what you can do? And said, you know, what he, you know what his answer, his response to me? He said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. And at first I thought, well, that's a really vague answer. But then I began to understand what he was saying. We can change the direction of the hearts of the leadership if we would pray. We have to learn how to ask God for what we want. Now I want to show you this in Jeremiah. Jeremiah uh, 29. Most people use this Jeremiah 29 for, or for the most popular uh, popular scripture uh, called uh, for I know the thoughts I have towards you. But if you start way at the top you'll really begin to understand the whole uh, context of this passage. Uh because one of the things that is interesting, let's go to verse 7. He's telling, he's giving them some instructions, right? He's giving them instructions because they're in another land. Now, they're in a land that is not God's land. So there is a principality over that land. There is something, the math is Babylon. So we already know what kind of country they were. We already know what kind of kingdom it was. It was more than a country. It was a group. of. It was, they were conquering the world. You know, they was like the uh, America or the Russia of their day. And so they had many territories under them and every territory had a ruling source. So God gives us a very clear thing that he says to us to do. He says in verse seven. Now, we always focus on for I know the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of peace. Not of, that's verse 11. You have to start at verse seven to understand the reason God is saying everything that he's saying. Right. And so at verse seven, he says to them and seek the peace of the city where I have called you to be carried away captive. And pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace, you will have peace. Now, this is the first thing I want to begin to establish in how to do warfare. You have to learn how to pray. Now, not only knowing how to pray, but knowing what to pray. A lot of times we don't know what to pray. And I'm not going to give you any cookie cutter formulas because I don't believe the cookie cutter color. Uh, I don't believe the cookie cutter formulas that work in prayer. Jesus gave us the Lord's prayer. And he told us what to pray. Sometimes we break it down and make it real deep. Really, you can just pray that prayer. But that is just one prayer. There's several different ways of praying. I don't think any one way of any of those are meant to be models of prayer. I think we should just learn how they were just meant to show us that we can talk to God about anything we need to talk to God about. But uh, in verse seven, he tells us, uh, gives us a very important clue. You're in a land controlled by somebody other than God. You're in a land under a land uh, uh, under the authority, under the rulership of another source. Now, he warns them. This is more of a warning, in my opinion, than it is anything else, because he's warning them that if you don't pray, you're not going to have peace. 
You're not going to have peace in this land in which you are in. Now, I can say that we can say that about America. America is clearly not the land of God anymore. Right. We're, we're slowly seeing a change where there is something else in control. I once had a dream of a principality fighting with an angel over the White House. I mean, they were going at it. This They were huge. Both of them were huge and they were fighting and warring over the White House. I'll never forget that that vision. That was a very interesting vision. That was not uh, that was a trance. Uh, that was a vision. That was a vision. Now. So there's always a struggle. I need you to understand there's always a struggle over the rulership, always a struggle over the authority. And so I'm trying to help this. But I want you to understand that not just over a country, but over authority, anybody in position of authority, you are at you are a target. Fathers, you are a target. Husbands, you are a target. Teachers, uh, targets, uh, police officers, targets, uh, government officials, elected officials, all targets of warfare. Why? Because this is where we affect people. This is where change is affected. You can't affect change from the bottom. It must happen at the top. And so what you'll see is in Israel's history, and you have to go through the book of Kings or Chronicles, take your pick. You only find about three good kings. The rest of them got on God's last nerve because none of them were good. Now, the kings that put away the idols and got rid of all of the idol worship, even though this is interesting, because even though the culture still, the people still didn't choose on their own to get rid of the idols in the high places. They still had that in their heart, but they would turn to God when those things, when the king turned to God, when the king did not turn to God, when the king brought in idols and bells and all the other uh, false God worship, then the people turned to those same things. And so what I want you to see, and you have to read through Kings yourself, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There is a, the position of authority makes us vulnerable to attacks. So you have to be careful. And this is why you see so many problems in a lot of houses where they have the father has been strategically. I told you all these things, they're wows, wows of the devil, tricks, plans and schemes. Now, I've told you that they are planners. They're not idiots. They're not dumb. They're not trying to spontaneously destroy anybody. This is a carefully orchestrated plan against the human race. And one of the things they've done is remove fathers from their home because removing the father from the throne home gives them access to the home. And so then you see, and then, then you see single family homes struggle in ways that you wouldn't see them struggle if there was everybody was in their place. Now, that's not to say that because dad is gone, because dad can be in the home and just like police officers and lawyers, well, uh, uh, elected officials, just like they can get compromised and send corruption all the way down through the city. Same thing can happen in a house. You can get compromised and then you'll bring things into your house and into your home. So being able to control the atmosphere is, is, is crucial. You as a father, you as an elected official, you as a police officer, you have the power to control the atmosphere because God gives you the power to control the atmosphere. So I want to stop here and pick up with this in the next video.